Well, hello there. Isn't that lighting harsh? That's what happens if you do reviews at the, uh, the middle of the night and it's dark outside. Those nice people at Gearbest had asked me to review this little quad, which I'll come to in another video. Because they also asked, perhaps they can pop me in a Free Sky XSR, one of those tiny little receivers, which they didn't quite manage. They sent me an X4R. Now, I, I can't really review this. This is a very well known receiver. Everybody uses these um, on their racing quads. But as it stands, it's a little bit too big. It is a pretty small receiver, uh, and it's perfect for mini quads. But surprisingly, although these little pins are small, as soon as you have servo cables and their connectors going on, they do tend to grow a certain amount where you can't put them in easy places. And when we're dealing with something small like this, this actually becomes quite big. So I thought um, in today's video, I will show you how to change this into something a little bit more like an uh, XSR. Basically, we'll take these pins off um, and that will allow us to get the, the maximum we can out of it in terms of being able to fit in the smaller spaces. And I mean, I'm talking about doing it for things like this, but it's the same on the 250 or 220. Those spaces you've got to put these things are smaller and it really helps if you don't have this plus a plug coming out the end, because pretty much you're only gonna have uh, three tiny cables hooked into it, either for PPM or more like the SBUS. So let's get to it. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to bind the receiver before I do anything with it because it's well, you need three pairs of hands really to do it in the first place. So I thought easier to do it now than when I strip it all down and stuff. So I've just put the trellis in bind mode, connect it up, take it out of bind mode, green light, and we're all good. Next thing to do is just strip off the external things, this little piece of plastic here, the cardboard cover that kind of slides off, and there's a little sticky bit underneath that just needs to peel off. Next thing to do is snip these plastic bits as it holds the two pin headers together and obviously makes it a bit tricky to get um, single pins out at a time. If you just sort of snip along these, um, the little bits will come away and then you can finally sort of slide all the extras off and with the pins separated it'll be easier to desolder them and take one out at a time, as shown by this blurry picture. So de-pinning is pretty easy and I apologise for my stupid head here. Just heat up a bit, bit of solder on the end, pull it through and they come off pretty easy. The thing to do next is just use a solder sucker to open up the holes so you can slide the wire in. My eyesight is so bad here I have to get so close to see what I'm doing even with my close-up glasses so apologies again for my head. Next thing I do is I just got a piece of leftover servo wire which I'm going to strip the ends off with a knife. Um, I'm not going to tin these I'm just going to twist them up tightly and then poke them through those holes we made with the solder sucker and then just solder those in place, which is a pretty quick operation. That's it all done. Fairly happy with that. Now, using clear heat shrink would be an obvious advantage because then you can see the LEDs. I didn't have any, so mine's being ninja black. But as long as you can find the button to press, you're good. And there it is, all done. Just with a nice little bit of very flexible silicon wire. Um, which we've left no end on because that's going to have to solder straight onto a flight controller which is coming up on this. I won't do that now. Please go and see the video about this one. Meanwhile, there's a link to the X4R in the description below. Obviously we've made it look uh, a bit more like a different receiver <laughs> so you could always just get that one instead. Anyway, I'm off to go play with this now. See you later.